Bam! You guys are already seeing that I'm going live. That's awesome. Awesome! It's so weird because it's all counting down, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and all of a sudden I see everybody in the chat, so I'm really excited about that. I think I need to get more light up in here. It's all dark. Okay, guys, so I thought I would talk about intermittent fasting, and only because it's uh, popular to talk about, not that I really care about it, but there's a lot of people who are confused about it. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. It's very interesting to go live on YouTube. This is, I think, my third, third or fourth one now. Do I like younger guys? <laughs> I like anyone with a good soul. How's that? Good heart. Hi from Pasadena. What's up, T? Ends with an A. Hi, everyone. Hola, que tal? So if people are coming in, five, seven, 200 grams. So I'm gonna take questions like that, uh, macros and stuff a little bit. When people start rolling into the broadcast, hey guys, hola. Um, and then I'm, I'm gonna go into, see, ooh, chocolate cookie or soda. Probably the soda, um, but they're both pretty bad. California in the house. Okay, now that everybody's chiming in, because this will go up on YouTube and people are just gonna see me talking to nothing, like a ghost. So I thought I would go into the subject of intermittent fasting as everybody comes into the broadcast. Hey everyone. And many of you. Laguna Beach, beautiful down there. Okay, so I'm gonna go right into uh, the subject and then I'm gonna take some questions and thank you, thank you. You have questions, just hold your questions for a second. Actually, my phone is quite far away from me. I can't really see very well, especially when there's a lot of chats or comments building up. So if you guys start asking questions, I won't be answering it until the end of me explaining a little bit about intermittent fasting. Okay, here we go. So the reason why I decided to do a live broadcast on intermittent fat fasting specifically is because I just had a consultation with a woman yesterday who had been doing intermittent fasting for three months. So for me, I was rolling up the sleeves. I was like, she's the perfect subject to analyze. Not these people who do it for a couple of weeks. I mean, three months solid. So I want to describe to you guys what happened to her and what happens to most of you who intermittent fast, especially if you do it long enough, now we've got data to analyze. So, she says that she's doing intermittent fasting to, you know, uh, protect her cells, the anti-aging benefits, which is also very subjective. I think that she was also doing it to drop her body fat. Even though she said that she's quasi good with her weight, most people who fast aren't like, I'm going to detox and I'm going to do this and that because if we really were going to detox, we wouldn't, we would change a lot of things like the EMF poisoning, radiation, amalgam fillings. I mean, we would do a lot of stuff to really try to clean out our systems. You know, the, the filter, filtration of your water source, like you would take things to the highest degree. Like you wouldn't, you know, you'd be careful, like even the color of clothing that you're wearing that is saturated in chemicals because it's dyed with chemicals. So, I mean, let's keep it real. Most people intermittent fast because they want to lose weight. Okay, so let me talk about her and then what's really going on with intermittent fasting. So, uh, she did it for three months. She said that the first two months were amazing. She uh, had high blood sugar before so she, she had been doing a low carb protocol for a while and maybe a year or more. And so she decided to transition into intermittent fasting, which intermittent fasting for those who just chimed in, it's you have your last meal and then you might go 22 hours without eating anything. So let's say if your last meal is at six, you would go the next day till about uh, one or 20 hours 
to one o'clock to refeed. And people have this concept that because you're not eating, because eating, there's a lot of carcinogens and pesticides and crap and food that if you give your organs a break, you will protect your cells. That's the train of thought. Here's the problem. So she did intermittent fasting. The first two months were fantastic. Before she was having kind of like insulin resistance numbers and her A1C uh, was too high. So it was at like a 6.1 and if you're eating carbs, well she wasn't really eating carbs, it really should be close to like a 5.0. But here's the thing, milligrams per deciliter. So when she did a uh, fasting protocol, her blood glucose dropped and she kind of got out of that diabetic range. So she was like, this is fantastic. And I was asking her about how she felt. She said, I felt great. I felt great on it. I had tons of energy. I feel fantastic. Now you get a lot of this with veganism, right? When people cut out the crap and then they go into veganism and they're high, they feel amazing and that the actual problems that come with depravity don't come for a while. So I, I said to her, so here we go. Hi everybody, coming into the chat. So, um, so into the third month, her blood sugar rebounded back up very high. So now she's strict keto and she's trying to do everything possible to get those darn numbers back down again. Because if your carbs are low and you're doing a strict ketogenic protocol and you have a blood glucose, blood glucose of 92, 95, 100, you have damage going on. So she was getting worried. That's why she scheduled the consultation with me. So I asked her, you know, a barrage of questions. And I said, this is exactly what I try to explain to people. Because now her blood sugar is high all day long. Now all the lethargy and the tiredness and all the problems with running on high blood sugar are coming, creeping back into her life. Hardcore. So what people don't understand, there's a rebound effect from fasting. If you're not keto adapted, your brain does not know how to convert body fat into ketone bodies that can fit within the Krebs cycle and into your brain. Your body doesn't know how to do that. So for people who are not adapted, your fat cells, you know, if they're quasi somewhat efficient, can go into gluconeogenesis, convert back into glucose and be used. So some people who fast will drop fat, sort of. But once the brain understands that the glycogen is depleted and your blood glucose is running sort of low, it goes into gluconeogenesis hyper mode. So in the very beginning, she had a drop in blood sugar and I said, that's hypoglycemia, hun. That's, that's all that it is. Her ketones aren't high enough. Yeah, um, I, I can, I'm not even looking at the comments right now. I just want to tell you this story and it's going to go real quick. Just give me, give me, give me a few minutes and then I'll take your questions about whatever. But the fasting is the subject I'm talking about right now because it's a hot topic. So I've coached you guys, you know I've coached over 2,000 people. That's a lot. And I have people, people call me like the food Nazi and the strict person. I'm really not. I'm just, I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson for myself because I made mistakes in the first year. And I also started to see massive issues with people doing keto. Because there's only about 5 to 8% who actually fully keto adapt. People don't know if they're losing weight. The weight on the scale is that water, fat, muscle, what is that? What is the state of your health prior to doing keto? People don't even know. So right when people say, I feel fantastic, it's already subjective out of the box. Because people aren't being their own scientist and writing down and tracking their energy levels, their sleep quality, their skin, their breath, their smell of their armpits, the, their um, strength, um, their hormones, their, you know, LDL small particle Bs. Like, nobody tests that stuff before. They don't do experiments to see the evolution of doing keto and then fasting. And often people don't do it long enough. So she had lost a lot of weight. She lose, lost a lot of weight, and all of a sudden her weight starts crap creaking back up. And I said, 
Well, yeah. When you when you are fasting, your blood sugar drops because you're not eating carbs. So your blood sugar drops, your insulin drops. And with that, it's very hard to store fat if your blood sugar is low because your insulin is low and, and insulin is the storage hormone. But in that time period, to get her through the day without glycogen stored, her adrenals have to kick in. Adrenaline, 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 adrenaline. And now you start to develop adrenal insufficiencies. Because if you're not in ketosis, where do you think your body's gonna get that energy from? You think your body's gonna be like, take freaking lazy fat cells and convert it into glucose? No. Because most of you don't have the business, naturally. Losing weight on a scale means nothing. It's as subjective as can be. People are wishing what they want. Everybody wants the quick and easy fix. They want to look young. They want to have energy. Um, they want to be uh, famous. <laughs> they want to be successful. They want to you know, have energy, whatever it is, people, money, power, whatever. Things don't come for free. There is always a price when you do things because you want the short, quick fix. Remember that. Remember that. So people who go online and they're reading all these message boards and everybody else makes it sound so easy. The first thing that you should question is why does, does this person explain keto or fasting or anything as in, an easy, in an easy context? Because if it's easy, there's something wrong and you will pay the price. Nobody on the internet talks about paying the price of fasting or dieting. I mean, the dieting from the 80s and 90s, yeah. They're like, don't diet, that's so bad for you. But fasting is dieting. So, hold on you guys, just hold on with the comments, hold on. Okay, so, and then when, when I can see the trolls, I'll just block them and get rid of them. Okay, so we've already got a troll here. Um, hold on a second, let me get rid of the troll. Okay, sorry, sorry to uh, cut there. I know I'm gonna get a lot of trolls because it's about that time where I can get a lot of people. Okay, so what happened to her, and this happens to everyone. First your blood sugar drops, your adrenals kick in, you feel fantastic, and then your blood sugar spikes real high and you start to feel terrible. And some people feel terrible right away fasting because their electrolytes are low, They've got gut issues, they have adrenal issues, they have thyroid issues, their hair starts falling out, and Dr. Fung and all these other people do not like to address people who've got metabolic derangement or damage trying to fast. Because if he did that, he wouldn't make much money. Because the problem is, is that a lot of people have metabolic damage. There's a reason why I am this fit at almost 50, because I would not treat my body at least on a conscious level, like I've been lied to and I've done, made mistakes, but consciously, if I have a choice to, you know, th live this life, which is going to damage my health, or live this life, which is proposed to, you know, build health, I'm gonna go that direction. I can fast, I can eat a lot of protein, I can eat nuts and cheese, and still not have the problems that most of you guys have. Why would I, who can do all these things, put people through their misery and have them do things that are not fun or, you know, quick, give you quick, quick results because I've worked with thousands of people and I don't lie. I've got nothing to lose by, um, at this point by stating the, stating the truth as I know it, because I've been consistently blunt straight to the point with people. That's my reputation. So I've got nothing to protect. I can't say that you're gonna have the business or you're gonna adapt and keto's the best thing in the world or intermittent fasting's the best thing in the world because I know different. It's it, nothing, nothing is that easy, nothing. So listen to me and listen to me well. Most of you have adrenal insufficiencies. Your blood sugar is like this. There's a reason why when I go to the gym at a, as a woman at almost 50, I see guys without gains. They're young, they're young cats, right? 
And the one, like, there's this older dude I know who's in his mid-50s. He is, he is so committed to his fitness, but homeboy is tired. He looks tired. And the reason why he hasn't lost his gains, and he eats really well, but he doesn't sleep well, he looks tired. His workouts are compromised. His health is compromised. You can't just look at somebody and go, oh, they're healthy because they have muscles. That doesn't mean anything. What's the actual truth? Nobody says the truth. What's really going on when you walk through the front door of your house and are alone with your own thoughts? What's really going on? People are depressed, they're anxious, they're stressed out, they don't sleep well, and we do uh, with compuls compulsive things, drink and party and all this kind of stuff, and we don't deal with reality because we don't even know what reality is anymore because we're so lied to and everything's about quick fixes. Don't believe me? Turn on the television. Turn on the television, look at all the ads that promise you a bunch of crap, and then you know that we're living in the friggin' matrix. Nothing in life is that easy. Nothing. And that all good things come to those who wait and who work hard. And if you want a shortcut, it's n you're gonna have short, quad, fake results. Oh, I dropped weight. I don't care. People say, I lost 20 pounds fasting. I go, I don't care. Look in the toilet and see if your, your crap is floating. Look in the toilet and see if your pee is bubbly. Yeah? Let me have a conversation with you and let me see if your eyes start getting small because you are friggin' hypoglycemic. That's the truth. But is, are people going to tell you that? No, because they're high on wanting things to be easy. You have to consider your adrenal glands. You have to consider your thyroid. Men? You have to consider your testosterone. Women, you have to consider your estrogen and your reproductive system. Why is not anyone talking about this? They're just talking about these bull crap. Oh my God, I'm so fabulous, so wonderful when I'm fasting. People talk about weight loss. Why aren't they talking about their health? Oh, my blood sugar dropped. Oh, but then if you do it long enough, it rebounds. Why did your blood, why did this woman's blood sugar rebound? because she was never in ketosis. And if she's walking around with 69 milligrams per deciliter of blood sugar, and that looks great on a ketogenic scale, are her ketones viable? No, they're not. What's the measurement of her cortisol rhythm? Why are people not talking about this? So when I start looking at the comments about intermittent fasting, you better be ready. You better be ready to come up against me because I've got the data to prove what I'm saying. I've worked with thousands of people and nobody has fared well over time fasting. Nobody, right? And look at all these people proposing intermittent fasting. And I don't count young guys who are fit, who could be taking exogenous whatever. I'm taking the average person who fasted, who had all their, their stuff, DEXA scans, make sure they didn't lose protein, did it for six months, and their health improved, improved exponentially. That's what I want to see. So remember this, guys, if you fast, you must rest. Because in the wild, if we didn't eat for two days, they rested. They only exerted energy when they had to, if they were not eating. So they really learned how to use ketone bodies better than we do. Because you have to factor in processed carbohydrates, the fact that we can only handle one teaspoon of carbs every time we eat, what happens when your brain becomes addicted to glucose? So then you're, you're these people who do this, you know, carb depletion and then replete garbage. Really? You think you're in ketosis? It takes months. What's wrong with you people? Sorry, not you guys. It takes months for the brain to stop being addicted to glucose. And just because your blood sugar drops and you see weight loss on a scale does not mean that you haven't created more metabolic derangement to your systems which nobody talks about, and then you refeed. And what happens? You start developing food addictions because when you first fast, you're not hungry. And then, all of a sudden, if you do it long enough, the hunger doesn't stop. You're just hungry all the time. Don't believe me? Fast for three months and watch it happen. My voice comes from the people. It's not coming from my experience. I'm good because I've treated my body as best as I can with the knowledge that I've had most of my life. So I'm pretty metabolically strong even though I've made stupid mistakes. But other people who are tired already, 
who've got these jobs, they're in your car, you've got kids, you've been overweight, you've yo-yoed, you don't sleep well, you know, your testosterone's low, you're estrogen dominant, and you think that you're gonna fast and then like push, push a button and you come out with smoke and mirrors like in perfect health, life doesn't work that way. Fasting puts stress on your adrenal glands and it puts you in a hypoglycemic state. It doesn't matter that your blood sugar, this woman had perfect keto numbers. She had 1.8, 3.0 perfect ketones and was tired. It took a lot to pull it out of her because they really want to rely on this fasting thing. It's like people who do colonics. They're like, colonics is so great. You know how many people ask me, can I do colonics? I'm like, well, if you want to put a strain on your lymphatic system in your heart and suck all the good bacteria out of your butt, I mean, in your colon, I mean, go ahead. But that's not normal in nature. So anytime you take a shortcut, you will pay a price. Remember that. Nothing comes for free. And nothing and no good health and no fit body and no losing weight is going to work out if you do it too quickly. The body is way too fragile for that. So that's my talk on intermittent fasting. What I, what I would like people to understand is you must keto adapt first to even attempt to fast. You must do that. So, um, who is this Vanessa Lee leaving a link? What is that link? Because I'm about to delete it. Because I don't know what that is. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is... This is why I'm here. If you guys have questions, I want to talk to you about what happens when you drop your carbohydrates and your glycogen is depleted. That's science. We can talk about, I mean, God, I lost weight. We could do all that garbage and we can get to the science, right? We can go to my experiences of working with people. So what I propose for people to do is adapt and eat a lot of fat because eating a high fat diet encourages the production of ketones. If you want to fast, you wait till you're adapted fully. And that, people, takes time. And nobody is patient enough to take the time to truly keto adapt. They throw these words around like they're cards on a table. Stop asking me about people like so Jason, who's been around for, yo, I'm almost 50 and I've been doing this for 10 years. Jason is irrelevant. Sorry. Unless he's a PhD doctor who's got smidgens of great information like Steve Finney, Jeff Bullock, then people don't mean nothing to me. All right? So if you want anybody to debate me based on my experiences, I will crush them. I mean, the people who are just like, oh, fast and eat crap and do this and, you know, telling you guys what you want to hear. That's what, anybody who talks to you that way, run. Run with a cross and some garlic the opposite direction because they're lying to you, because they want to make those dollar bills. I've already been asked about Eric Berg. I don't know him personally, but in my opinion, because I'm straight to the point, he is a charlatan who likes to make cash. Don't believe me? Look at all the crap he sells. Look at the clickbait titles that he uses. And I would like to see Dr. Berg without a shirt on, because I think he's only like one or two years older than me. Let's see what he looks like. You know what I'm saying? Proof is in the pudding. Yeah, you're gaining weight. Okay, so we're gonna, now I'm gonna take the questions and uh, I'm gonna calm down. I got to, you know, you know I get into my little rants. Um, I'm not trying to, to, I'm very, I'm very, I'm not very PC. I'm not very diplomatic. I say what I think and get me into trouble, but it is what it is. At least I ain't lying to you people. Okay, so Toby asked about going over your protein grams. Yes, I am right about Dr. Berg. It only takes two seconds. And I'm sure any PhD doctor who actually does a lot of research would get pissed. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, more trolls trying to get stuff out. Okay, gone. Goodbye. Good night. All right. Yes, very passionate. It's because I work so hard. I, I sit on my computer and answer questions on all my social media as best I can and people are really going through health issues and then you go to this Jason guy or you go to these bodybuilder people and they're telling you bullshit and drink this shake and buy this product. Life never works that way. Never. And you know you guys know that. 
Nothing's hard. It's not hard to do keto. Poverty is hard, right? Death. Illness is hard, but not keto. What's the difference between what? Keto is not about weight loss. It's, that's a myth. And I mean, you can lose weight on it, but it's a journey. Yo. It could take you like three, six months to a year to adapt before you can even mess with, with fat loss on it. You know, you got to be as disciplined as myself if you really, really want to be in strict keto all the time. How's that? Who else is going to tell you that online? They're going to tell you it's so easy. It's not easy. This was a lot of work. Every second and every minute of every hour of every day, I work on this stuff. Yoga doesn't matter if you do yoga, you know everything, child, Miss Fit Helena. Everything must be done be before three o'clock because of the circadian rhythm. This is diffused light, you can't see. This is the worst light. I don't care what Dr. Berg says. You want to follow Dr. Berg? You're on the wrong channel. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. And if I sat in here and debated him, he would be sitting there stuttering. Stuttering. Uh, to resolve hypoglycemia while you sleep, you must be eating a couple of bites of protein with fat all day long, even before bed. Even though it's very difficult for your body to digest food, if you do a table, one tablespoon or two tablespoons of meat with fat, you won't have these crazy waking up in the middle of the night. A lot of you guys are waking up in the middle of the night because you're having a hypo a reactive hypoglycemic response. That's why you wake up. It's not because you have to pee. It's because of your blood sugar is getting too low or your cortisol is too high. You're 54 years old and you're gonna look, you can't look like me. This is years in the making, but you can look like the best of you. Yes, Dr. Berg looks like he's got low testosterone. Let's see him without a shirt. I have 10 times less testosterone than a man. Why do I have muscles? That's not genetics anymore, honey. I'm too old for that. It's a lot of work. Yes, I'm writing a book, Jesse. I'm writing a book and it's the ultimate keto book and it's, I'm covering all these subjects and I'm working my ass off. It's hard to write a book and tell the truth. Cause you know what someone told me once, Stephanie, you can't sell the truth. And I said, watch me. Bay Chris, you just keep pushing those subjects. <laughs> You're a skinny guy, 140 pounds, 5'10". I couldn't see the rest. Uh, thank you, Ava. Uh, sorry for what? You don't have to be sorry for anything, Helena. Fit Helena, which is not your name, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm writing the Ultimate Keto book and it's, I'm making it more because these keto books keep coming out that I'm highly disappointed in because of course, they make keto sound easy and it's not. You guys have lectin issues, histamine issues, goitrogens, oxalates, you know, nightshade issues, gut issues, gut permeability, uh, thyroid issues. I mean, we're a mess and nobody talks about this stuff. That's what keto is really about. <laughs> you test your glucose, you can test it all day long, Lizzie. The most important time is fasted on an empty stomach. Thank you, was it Melly Mel? Fasted on an empty stomach is the objective number, right? Because you haven't eaten all day long. So, I mean, all night long. So if your blood sugar is high, you know that your cortisol and you're cranking out you're, you're going into hypergluconeogenesis while you sleep. So you want to have your blood glucose between a 69 and an 80 if you're trying to keto adapt. That's, those are the numbers that you're looking for. But then you, you should actually measure your blood glucose all day long just to see the algorithm of your blood sugar. Sunflower seeds are not okay. They're not okay because they're considered lectins. And a lot of you guys have food sensitivities and don't realize it. That's another big problem. Pea strips are useless. Uh, I've been doing keto for five months, months now. I've lost 40 pounds. And how much of that was water and muscle? Turmeric's great. Somebody asked about turmeric. My book is coming out. What is it, Elisa? Oh, your fasting blood sugar is 112. Yes, uh, I can't help you on a broadcast, 
but uh, if you go to my website, which is stephanieperson.com, I am now taking in consultations because I closed my calendar for bookings to write the book, but I was just getting inundated with people. So I thought if I do less consultations and spread them out uh, intermittently through the week, then I can do a few each week. More trolls. I'm so bored. Wait, hold on. Let me get this troll here. I don't. I haven't been following McGregor and Mayweather. I have no idea. My consultations, I don't want to talk about money on, on this broadcast. You can go to my website, which is stephanieperson.com, and you can see the packages there. Your fasting glucose is 55. You are super hypoglycemic, and that's dangerous. Yep. 69 and 80 after fasted is... That's what you want to look for, but you want to have your ketones between a 1.8 and a 3.0 with mm -hmm. a glucose. Between, did I... I thought I freaking put my phone on mute. Can I up my calories to lose weight on keto? It's not about... Calories don't matter, and I've expressed this 5,000 times. 500 calories from cookies and 500 calories from steak are not going to be broken down and used the same. 500 calories and 500 calories are not the same. Uh, uh, diabetics adapt like everyone else. Uh, type 1s can't adapt, but they can drop their blood sugar and they can use ketones, but they won't be like highly, highly adapted. Type 2s, it can reverse diabetic symptoms, so get on it. And it's just like you do the same thing as anyone else. It, it can be bubbles in your urine. It's potentially, um, it's harder with guys when they stand up to pee because they create bubbles by the, you know, pee going in the water at such a distance. But if you're a guy, sit down and put the thing between the legs and pee in the toilet and see if it's bubbly, it could be protein loss, maybe. I don't recommend re uh, probiotics without a lot of research to find out what kind of gut uh, dysbiosis you have to then know what probiotic to take. You can't just take any probiotic because you can make more bad bacteria. Yes, I'm turning 50 very soon and I'm very excited about it and I want to teach people that as we get older we do not have to be thrown out to the pasture. You know, it doesn't really matter the age for me because my life is so young. So does it really matter if I say I'm 32 or 50? Does it really matter? No, I just have more wisdom at this age. That's all. Thank you guys. Yes, you can gain weight on keto. A lot of people know that they try keto and they gain weight. That's because they have prior damage that they have to address and you must adapt first. You can't do a ketogenic protocol. No, I don't like 25, but I just feel young. My lifestyle is young. And to me, uh, the most important thing in life, number one is my health and my, my, uh, you know, my mental acuity, the sharpness of the brain, because without the physical body and the sharpness of the brain and balanced hormones, life doesn't mean much to me. So you can see that that's priority number one. Ghee will, nothing will get, no, ghee, ghee is great because it helps you, you cook it, you cook out more impurities, but it's not gonna help you get into, it's not like a magical fat that gets you into ketosis over anything else. It has to do with how, if you have any allergenic response to normal butter. What about non-organic veggies? I mean, it sucks because they're gonna have pesticides on it. And if you have junked up detoxification pathways, it's not gonna help, but you know what? Non-organic pesticide latent veggies are better than going to friggin' McDonald's or to Panda Express. You know, you just gotta weigh the options. Help with estrogen dominance, cruciferous vegetables. But here's the thing with cruciferous vegetables. We're supposed to be eating uh, fruits, um, plants, source foods in season. So you have to consider the plant chemicals. You have to find out if you have a sensitivity to lectins or to nightshades. And if you have sensitivity to lectins, you might need to get a pressure cooker and cook out some of those plant chemicals because that's the plant's defense. But that, those cruciferous vegetables, the fiber and things like uh, high in plant pectins will pull out the, that will help de-junkify the estrogen out of your liver. And then you have to sleep well, you have to think about BPA plastics, anything that can, birth control pills, anything that, blood sugar dysregulation, not sleeping well, all of these things cater to estrogen dominance. 
milk, you know, the hormones injected in meat will create a, a, a wonkiness to your reproductive hormones. You know, women become estrogen dominant, their progesterone drops. Men, they start developing dehydrotestosterone, DHT. I mean, it's a mess. Xenoestrogens are in plastics and, and, and synthetic things that can mess with your, um, your natural uh, hormonal uh, balance. 60 to 100, what? Glucose? No, no nuts are okay except for macadamia nuts at this point. You can't take, somebody just asked, I had type, a type one diabetic diabetes, how do I take it away? You can't take it away, but you can manage your type one diabetes through ketogenesis. And I can't explain that in the pro, this, this broadcast. It would, I would need like to do a seminar on it. It's just too lengthy of a subject. I recommend workouts for guys. It depends on what your goals are. You know, everything's different. If you do keto, a person beginning keto is going to be different from a person who, who eats carbs. You have to keep your glycogen storage quite full to lift as a non-keto person, as a carb person. But as a person trying to keto adapt, you have to take down the intensity of your workout to even create, drop your blood sugar and create viable ketones. It's very touch and go in the very th first three months. You kind of feel great a few days. You feel like ass another couple of days. So you have to do all of these different things to create a balance, to adapt, to then build muscle. Cause obviously you can build muscle on keto, obviously, obviously. I mean, this light is horrible, but obviously you can, you can uh, build muscle. No maca powder. Good night. Bye-bye. Spikes your blood sugar. No cardio. You can do a warm up, but there's no need to do cardio, right? Because your body goes into gluconeogenesis for those who do cardio and on an empty stomach and no, no. For what? You think you're going to lose weight? Body doesn't work like that. Nope, 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 nope. That's why you got to test your blood sugar and make sure that your blood sugar is not high. Because if you do a bunch of cardio, you could go into more gluconeogenesis and store more fat and mess up your adrenal glands. Yeah, there's many ways to tell if you're keto adapted. First, you have to measure all your damage. Go write it down and track it, right? Track your sleep. Track if you wake up because you could be having hypoglycemia in the middle of the night. Track uh, your skin quality. If it's dry, if you have eczema, if you have dandruff, if you've got yeast infections, if your tongue is white, like you have to track all that stuff first. Then you have to do the correct protocol of keto and it's not out there in what you see on the internet because what you see mostly, not all of it, most of it is bull crap, which is gonna confuse you. So if you're eating a bunch of cheese with casein in it and dairy, like dairy in the context of milk and cream and poor quality meats, and not eating enough fatty meats, whew, you know, and, and your protein's too high and you're not getting any sleep, you're stressing with your spouse and you have kids and you're not getting to bed on time, all of these and subjected to too much uh, blue light at night, all these things matter. No, I haven't had, somebody asked me if I, that, that's not a serious question, somebody asked if I would have cake and wine, wine on my birthday. I will never go off a of keto and you listen to this. I haven't had a drop of sugar in almost 10 years. Good night, gone. I'm not playing with this body, it's the temple. Pray to it every day. I wouldn't do Stairmaster really, that's for, no, no, no. Nope, nope, nope. Yes, keto could be amazing for Parkinson's. Remember, for autoimmune disorders, you must do the right protocol of keto. Your fat must be high. You gotta make sure that you don't have food sensitivities because food sensitivities can create an inflammation even though it's a list of keto approved foods. You don't know if your particular DNA, your genetics or your epigenetics can handle these particular foods and that's why there's a lot of experimentation. If you're adapted, everything balances out. Sleep, deep sleep, REM state sleep, energy levels, you don't crash, you don't need to nap, you start getting stronger, your mental acuity, your candida drops, your adrenals heal, your you know diabetes, high insulin numbers balance, your hormones balance, men's testosterone begins to, to uh, spike, and women's estrogen dominance, their reproductive hormones, the three estrogen and progesterone and testosterone balance, that's how you know you're in ketosis, and that's why you need to uh, chart everything before you actually really do it. Um, uh, Laura, it's not like, if, okay, Laura, you don't need to lift heavy. Nobody needs to lift heavy. Nobody needs to lift heavy. 
I gained 15 pounds of muscle not lifting heavy. You don't have to lift heavy. You just have to get enough good deep muscle contraction and do time under tension negatives. So it takes as long for you to lift heavy when, once you've adapted and adapting the speed of that is on you. It is on people's discipline. Are you getting to bed on time? Probably not. How many people have I coached who's like, I try so hard, but I still have a hard time getting to sleep or going to bed early or stress managing. The, the, the quickness of you adapting to be able to do what you want to do with your body and get lean and all this kind of stuff and be super heroes uh, is all about how hard you work for it. You want to cross that bridge over to ketosis land? Yeah, resistance bands. Where are they? I got some. Hold on. I got some somewhere. Dang, I can't find it. Oh, here they are. Let me show you guys time under tension, right? I, just, I always have these. They're my travel workout bands, right? So the thing about, if I show you guys just a shoulder press, I've showed this so many times. Okay, here's a shoulder press, right? I'm doing a shoulder press. Most people lift heavy, which means they have to use levers, right? To get the weight up, right? They're using momentum and they're using their levers and they're not actually using the muscle. If I actually want to use my shoulder, I got to slow down the movement. And people don't feel like they're getting a pump if they slow it down. But if I press, if I do what people t typically do, watch guys. If I do what people typically do, look how much you see the muscle flex, right? Now what if I slow it down? Watch this. You see the difference on how much my muscle flexes when I slow down on negatives? That means the, the, the actin and myosin, the filaments are rubbing against each other, creating that blistering effect and then growing muscle and creating more active mitochondria within the muscle cell and also getting those GLUT4 receptors to do their job to clear out excess glucose and to be used instead of stored as fat. So if I'm pressing, I'm slowing down and I'm going three second negatives. I'm not going to sit there and do a pump class. That's not going to do, my muscles are barely flexed doing that. No, if I'm doing a bicep curl, I'm coming up and I'm really flexing that bicep curl and I might even turn the wrist, as you see if I turn the wrist, then the, I get the peak of the bicep. There's a lot of different ways you guys have to learn how to work out. So if I do lateral raises, right? I'm not gonna sit there and do this. That's not gonna do anything to the muscle, right? I'm gonna slow down the motion. And I often squeeze at the top of the positive motion. I'm getting hot in here. <laughs> I've turned off fans and, and air conditioning so you guys can hear me. Post preandral blood glucose with the 1.2, something you have to recycle that. Testosterone levels on keto for men has conflicting studies. Oh, forget the studies. Forget the studies. Because none of the studies have been done, done long enough. Here's the thing about these stupid studies. First of all, they don't have the macros correct. These studies are subjective because they don't know what they're shooting in the dark because they haven't worked with people, thousands of people before then. Let's work with 2,000 people. Now let's do a study because now we've worked with 2,000 people. Oh, now we understand blood sugar on keto. Now we understand this, that, and a third. But if you do a study straight off the jump, I worked with a woman who has adult epilepsy. She's working with the top neurologist, most credible neurologist on the planet who's a ketogenic specialist to get her seizures to stop. He told her to go off keto because they couldn't get her seizures to stop. You know why? They had her protein too high, they had her fat too low, and they didn't tell her to stop doing cardio. So she kept having seizures all day, day long. She came to me and I said, stop doing your spin class. She's like, ah, it's my spin class. I said, you look like a lollipop. Big head, tiny body. You're super hypogluconeogenic. You're obsessed with losing weight. You're overstimulating your nervous system. Stop doing cards. I had her lift. I was like, you're gonna lighten the weight. You're gonna lift. You're not gonna do any spin class, no cardio. We're gonna drop that protein because she was eating like a, almost a whole rotisserie chicken. Like in one sitting, I said, get rid of all that protein. We're gonna take down your protein to this much protein. We're gonna up your fat and we're gonna get rid of nuts and cheese and all this stuff, and you know how long it took us to get her adapted? Eight months, eight. Because on her own, she still refused to do everything that discipline. And then finally, yes, a whole chicken. Finally, 
She adapted. And you know what happened to her seizures? Gone. Gone. She hated me in the beginning. We not hated me, but we were like, we were not homies. Now she loves me. She's been so kind to me after because I, I stayed strict Steph. I would not respond to the, but I love my cardio, but like, I can't eat all that fat. Like I didn't listen to her. I said, this is what you got to do. You either do it or you're not going to work with me. After eight months, she's adapted. And she's been adapted a couple years now. She's like, seizure's gone. And when she tried to talk to her neurologist, he didn't want to listen because he wasn't the one that got her seizures to stop. So I don't care what these studies say. Their data is subjective. Short-term studies mean nothing. It takes you months to adapt. So if you haven't adapted in six months, keto looks terrible on, on blood values. It looks horrible. No cheese is good. No cheese is good in big capital letters. So it's like, ah, oh, it's cheese. <laughs> yes, the neurologist, the, they had an ego. She also worked, she, she goes to John Hopkins, very notable for working with epilep, epileptic patients. And she had a ketogenic dietitian, and that woman had her macros wrong and had her pee on a urine strip. What are we in the 1950s? Come on, people. Wake up to the future. Like, they don't know what they're talking about. Forget these studies. Get rid of it. That's the problem with studies. They're bullshit. Some of them are good. You can take a person who's an omnivore or carnivore, and you could take like a vegan scientist, and they will completely clash on data and all their studies. Go with what makes sense. No cheese, it's got casein in it. Google it. I'm just passionate. I'm not, I'm not really this hard. I just get like so many questions coming at me and I get really intense. 86, your blood sugar is 86. Uh, it's too high and ketones are a bit too low, but you're close, you're close. And not only does the numbers matter, but how you feel is the most important. It doesn't matter what the blood values say. It really matters how you feel. So track it. Best ways to ma uh, measure your, is, is to weigh your food. German butter kraus. White rice is not keto, Alex, sorry. That's just garbage. It's a grain and keto is about getting your body to learn how to use units of fat because you become superhuman once you become fully adapted. And that's what's so appealing about it. All like all this disease starts to lessen or go away, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's, like, you know, all this stuff. And then you drop weight and you get super strong and you're, you're, you're mentally sharp. That's why people love to do it, but it's not easy to adapt. You have to really work hard at it. Why do people keep asking if I'm single? Don't you see I'm a tough ass chick? You couldn't handle that trick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> My fitness pal is garbage. It's, it's so wrong, it's embarrassing. Best is to weigh your food and to Google or to look at the package of the meat. This many grams of protein and this much serving and then weigh it. That's the best way to do it. Yes, most things are subjective in life. You know, even everything I say, don't believe me, research it, research it yourself. But people are like, why no cheese? Cheese is good for you. And I'm like, you don't have to believe me. Just go do, just do some research on inflammation, you know, A1 cows, casein, and it's it, it, that's a growth factor to take a little baby calf and grow to big, what weirdo went under a cow's nipple and started sucking on it? That's what I'm saying. Fermented foods can damage your, or can create like histamine issues and gut. Just don't eat fermented foods, people. Wait for that stuff. Cheese is not mucus, but cheese just is not for humans. So the reason why butter is okay is because it has very little of those, those proteins that damage our body. No HIIT training until you're fully adapted and you have no adrenal insufficiencies or no inverted cortisol or any of that weird crap. Bacon is good as long as it doesn't have any sugar and it's pastured pig. 
Yeah, high blood med medications are really hard on the liver. So people on like all these medications don't don't adapt very well. You can, but you know, you've just really got to be good to your detoxification pathways when when you're on all those medications trying to do keto. Uh, the best way to measure ketones in the blood is a blood it's a, not not it's not like that. That's a, uh, that's hyperdermic. No. The best way to measure it is to do a test. Like, right? A ketone test, get a dual glucometer that measures glucose and ketones and test your ketones fasted in the morning. It is absolutely useless to test your ketones in the afternoon. It's fasted. Now you can test glucose all day long, but it's the fasted ketones that's most important. Medications typically spike your blood sugar, unfortunately. Yes. Because it's a stress to the body, you know, it's just poison in you. You know, some of it helps you and some of it's just straight poison on the liver. You use, ex there's no such thing as excess calories from fat. You use it. Especially if you do the right thing. Lungs, brain, reproductive hormones. You need, your fat uses this as structure to for the body. We're made out of fat, people. Fat, protein, and water. If you don't eat fat, your skin gets dry, right? If you don't eat fat, you don't have cholesterol to build estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, so your, your freaking sex hormones go to crap. Trust me, your, fat, your body's gonna use fat for everything. Deb, I come about across Jimmy Moore. Hold on a second. Okay. I'm gonna do a little bit of promoting, hold on. When people ask me this question, I'm always shocked. This is Jimmy Moore's book, okay? That's Jimmy Moore's book. See that? Keto Clarity came out a couple years ago. Hold on. <laughs> Wait for it. And boom. So do I know Jimmy Moore? Yeah, I think so. I'm in his book. See that? But I, I love it because I'm on the same page as David Perlmutter, who I have so much respect for. So I think Jimmy's awesome. Some things I don't agree with, but all in all, I think he's an awesome person. But some things I don't agree with. And, and that's, and I'm sure stuff I say he doesn't agree with. But that's okay, he's still an awesome person. Yes, David Perlmutter, the grain brain guy. He's awesome, he's an awesome person. I've actually had a nice little conversation with him on the phone, so I really respect him. You guys know I love Nora Gagoutis. You know I, I really love the work of, of Jeff Olick, Steve Finney, and some other PhDs have some great aspects. And then it starts getting watered down, you know, after that. Because macadamia nuts are high in monounsaturated fat, they don't have mycotoxins to the level. They have less carbs, they are monounsaturated fat, they don't have all the phytic acid that the other nuts have. Should I say more? I mean, half of you guys have yeast, in well, 98% of you have yeast infections, or I mean, fungi, fungal infections. Why would you eat all those pecans and all those other nuts? Like, if the phytates don't get you, the nasty mold making fungus grow in your gut and in your poop should, should you know, and you have the danger, that should stop you from eating nuts. If, if the phytates won't kill you. As long as you have the coconuts. Now, coconuts, unfortunately, some people who are very sensitive to carbs, trying to do keto, don't adapt eating coconut meat. I'm fine. But most people are not fine. It shoots up their mushrooms are the same. There are some medicinal properties to mushrooms, but they're fungus. So if you have a candida overgrowth, don't touch, don't touch mushrooms, right? One plus one is two, simple math. Not that hard to, to you know, explain why. Plus cheese is also mold. So if the casein doesn't get you, why are you eating a mold when you know you got fungus, you know you got yeast infections, you know you've got freaking thrush, itchy butt, you know you have it. Skin problems. Yeah, oh, your wife has digestive issues. You gotta do your homework. Yes, 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 yes. 20 grams of fat, it's poly. We have too much omega-6 in our diet. It's not a three. We're acidic, people. Why would you eat a bunch of nuts? They're polys, most of them. I mean, there's like four things wrong with nuts. Nuts have shells because they want to survive, right? That's why they have a shell. Some of the shells are, some, some of these things are toxic poisonous the shells 
They have to remove some of the shells on nuts, nuts because they're poisonous. And we're eating it like it's a food group. We're eating it out of season. We're, we're cracking open the shells and we're roasting them. We're getting a bunch of mycotoxins on them. And then they have tons of phytates that rob your body of, of, of minerals, people. Why is everybody so mineral deficient? Why are everybody running towards supplements and multivitamins? One plus one is two, it's not that hard. We just have to stop being addicted to nuts. We have to stop being addicted to food. It's mother nature's fuel, don't abuse it, people. I'm not the food Nazi, I'm the person who's superwoman because I didn't believe the hype of, of freaking food addictions and food porn. People classically have bags under their eyes because their detoxification pathways are not functioning. Primarily their kidneys, liver, kidney, gut. And then if you don't sleep well on top of that, boom, suitcases. So if you're not sleeping well and your detoxification pathways aren't working, that's where the dark circles come from. This is, you guys can look at the face and be like liver, kidneys, kidneys, you know, colon, like, like your colon, like you, your face is a roadmap to your gut health. It's not just sun damage, you guys. Yeah, somebody asked about macadamia. It's the only one I approve, and I don't even like macadamia nuts on, the, on my list of approval things. Coconut butter is a big no. Oh, it spikes people's blood sugar like that. Even though I love it, I can eat it. I'm good, but most people can't. Your colon needs the nuts. Sorry, Steve. I'm sure you don't look super healthy. Well, you can alleviate some of the bags, but once you get those fat pockets or like, if you have fluid under here, it, you can reduce some of the fluids because sometimes the bags come from fluid. It's not always fat pockets. A nutritional yeast is approved, uh, but be careful. It's got a lot of carbs in it, but it's got B complex in it. Cod liver oil, anything with fish, make sure it's of high quality, very high quality. And yes, anything from the sea has potential toxins. Sorry, coconut flour, yes. I'm, I'm writing a book, I'll have recipes in it, I'm putting ingredients that I don't like, but you guys are addicted, I'm just gonna put a lot of information and disclaimers to be very careful. Journal, chart, and make sure that you're not having an inflammatory response or a glucose response to any of the recipes I put in my book. You can measure your glucose for everything. You can measure it fasted in the morning on an empty stomach, you can measure it post-workout, post-lunch, post dinner, you could use it to test for allergies, you could use it at night. Um, it's, I have consultations, it's, my system works like this. I open it up for a month, if people book it up in a week, I can't reopen it for a second month. I have to wait for that month of consultations to be done and towards the end I can then open it up again. The system was created so I don't get overwhelmed with too many consultations too far in advance. And that is why you see that my, you'll see dates, you'll see that they're booked up. I'm probably going to open up that calendar for more bookings into August in about eight days. Walking to recommendations for a liver cleanse. No, because I very careful with cleanses. They can hurt you. Inflammatory response, uh, bloated menstrual cramps, uh, loose floating stool, um, uh, joints hurting, too sore after a workout, uh, inflamed, bags under your eyes, I mean the list, skin issues, fucking, I mean can't gain any muscle, like the inflammation is never ending, tired all the time, like seriously, in inflammation, we all have it, it's just at varying degrees. Uh, GERD, GERD, you mean like acid reflux? You mean G-E-R-D? Is that what you're saying? Stephanie, sugar-free candy uh, with stevia, and you know you even have to be careful with that, to some degree. Liquid, liquid aminos. Uh, just get your aminos from food. You know, it's real food. It's simple. Real food tastes good if you allow yourself to eat it. People are like, oh my god, like if it's gonna be so boring without a bunch of crap on it. Yeah, are you okay? Your blue glucose was between 69 and what, 80? What was your ketones? That glucose without the ketones doesn't tell me much. It just tells me you're not diabetic.
No, you can't just test somebody asks how do you know if you're keto adapted. It's the numbers, but it's also tracking your symptoms. So if your sy symptoms aren't in alignment, there are a lot of people that have perfect ketogenic numbers and they're tired all the time. You're not using those ketones, they're being wasted. If you're tired and your ketones are like, boom, 2.8, 2.0, you're not using a lot of them. So they have to be viable. Sometimes people with leaky gut have perfect numbers, but they're not adapted. And that's why you gotta do a lot of journaling, testing, tracking. And people are like, I'm too busy for that. I'm like, okay, don't mess with keto then. It's actually 1.8 to 3.0 oh, tonne. That's the, the range. But even if the numbers are perfect, you still have to see if you feel okay. Yes, I covered intermittent fasting and how stupid it is and how bad it is for you and how every stupid person who just wants to believe in it. Oh my God, it's so anti-aging. Well, what if you have a, if you have hypoglycemia? Oh, well, we don't need to talk about that. It gives you, it makes you healthy. It's detoxification. Yeah, but what if you've got like um, hypothyroidism? Oh, well, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> what if you're electrolytes? What if you have like malabsorption and you don't get a lot of potassium in and like, you know, sodium and magnesium? Oh, we don't need to worry about it. Just fast. Just don't eat. It's great. It's anti-aging. <laughs> oh, okay, bye, Chris. <laughs> no, your actual, your GERD can actually improve on keto if you do the right protocol of it. You can actually get rid of GERD if you do it the right way. Okay, guys, it's one hour. I told myself I wouldn't go over an hour. I have a ten tendency to talk. I have a, somebody asked about my Facebook page. I have a keto course Facebook page. We cover together one topic a day, Monday through Friday. And I answer, I sit, and I'll probably do that after this. What I do is I sit down on my computer and I answer people's questions. And then on the weekend, it's free for alls. And then also I post videos. I do live broadcasts there where there's only a few, there's not, there's not this enormity of people. So I can actually answer more at length on the Facebook page, people's concerns. I can, act, I can, uh, I can actually talk on the live broadcast on that Facebook page. Oh, Donna's saying that the Facebook page is awesome because Donna's awesome. Of course get my ego stroked and it's true it is it's a it's a new protocol nobody Facebook groups always they just vomit crap and it's people fight with each other and there's a lot of food porn and weight loss and I'm, I'm not going into the science people we go into the science we don't play around it's to teach you guys how to to adapt my book is coming out we don't know you can't announce a release date when you're still writing a book when you have to finish it you have to edit it and you can't create a release date until the book is finished so it's not finished yet Yes, anyone, I think I really recommend that it's a, it's a subscription base. So it's $15 a month and I'm doing that because I actually work on that page. So it's a month to month private subscription keto course where I will also do, when I get the time, I will do a seminar. I flip this around, it's a white background and I will do uh, snapshot seminars as well. Yes, keto can either make gout worse or it can make gout better. That's a consultation. So yes, unfortunately, sometimes if you do keto the wrong way, you can create more uric acid or you can lower the uric acid buildup and you can cure your gout. It's either this way or this way and it's 50-50. So does somebody wanna write down, Donna, can you write down my website, stephanieperson.com for people to see? Um, I mean, I'm saying it, but sometimes people need a visual. So Donna, can you write stephanieperson.com so people can go to my site if they want to join the subscription based Facebook page or if they want to learn more about I need to update a lot of the information but there's information on there there's like frequently most asked questions and also consultations and all of that um, black seed oil I, Michael I haven't done enough research on it just be careful with oils because they're not stable so I'm kind of like no thank you Donna for writing the um, site. Thank you, Mike Freeman. I appreciate it. Yes, butter is an animal fat because it's coming from a cow. Seeds are seed oils, right? They're not stable. Uh, olive oil, seed oils, coconut oil, the best stable fats that can endure cold and high heat is animal fat because our bodies, we can go to Arizona and be in temperatures 115 and not die. Animal fat is very stable. It's amazing. It's got fat-soluble vitamins in it. It's got 
lipoic acid, it's got CLAs, it's got omega-3s in it. It's got so many amazing properties that, that seed oils don't have. Kimmy, you have to recycle questions like, I get like 50 questions at once, so if I didn't answer, you have to recycle it. But then I'm gonna go soon, so. I don't know what DMAE is, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. And I've worked really, really hard, especially at the bum, right? I worked on the bum. You guys can't see it. I, I have worked on this booty beyond measure. Inositol? I don't know what that is. No, you can't do cow. Cow's milk is garbage anyway. Get rid of it. It's got casein and whey. These are growth factors for cow. You know, cancer, growth factors, cancer, growth factors. My purple showing. Okay. Okay, guys, I think that's it. I think I should start working on my book because it's going to, the due date's going to come around. And I'm going to be like, oh, you know, I was doing too many promotional things. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Take magnesium. Only take magnesium, save your money. I was like, yeah, I agree. Just get high quality foods and then take magnesium. You can take magnesium lotion. What's up, PJ? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Karen. Or Karen. Thank you, Melly Mel. And I appreciate it. I, I think I only had two trolls on the entire chat. And that is a new record. And um, the only reason why I sound harsh is because I'm very passionate when I go on these broadcasts. So, you know, the, the internet Stephanie is a lot different from the real Stephanie. Internet will kick your ass. It will kick your ass. Trust me, it is not fun to be a public figure on the internet. It is really difficult, but the reward from people getting more healthy and fighting disease, it's beyond measure. It's like, wow, can I pinch myself that I have anything to do with any of this? I'm a very lucky person. Person, get it. Thank you. Yes, I do love it. I love it. I love it because if you didn't love all this science stuff, it would literally kill me. It, I get like 400 questions a day. I get questions on my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, my, my business or fan page. And I'm like, you guys, you're not the only, people inbox me, I'm like, you're not the only one. I can wake up to 200 questions going to my YouTube. Stephanie would never answers the questions on YouTube. I'm like, do you know how many people are asking me? I'm only one person. And keto is such a, it's such an unconventional area of fitness. Nobody really knows the truth. So how can one person answer everyone's questions? It's impossible. So I don't mean to not answer questions. It's just, I just don't have the time. Best is animal fats. You got it. Yes, I'm a dance, right? That's why I was a pro skateboarder. Pro, pro skateboarder. People don't realize like this, right? This was the hardest thing I ever did in life was, was doing this on vert ramps for 12 years. Okay hey guys, if I can handle skateboarding and skating with all those guys who were so awful in the 80s, not all of them. Some of them were awful. No coffee. Yeah, it's garbage. Coffee's garbage. Vegans cannot adapt, Kimmy. You need fat soluble vitamins, omega-3, you, you need animal protein and you need the fat, period. End of story. Because fat, our bodies, see, see, fat, fat, my butt, fat, fat, there's fat, fat. It's made out of mono. It's made out of mono, mono and saturated fat. It's made out of saturates and poly in the right ratios, very similar to a human. Your body does very well on animal fat when trying to adapt. And I've tried to work with vegans many times because I believe in their, their cause of, you know, trying to be, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? What is it? It's called uh, the moral component um, ethical. They're trying to be ethical. It just didn't work. So, you know, it's not that I didn't try. It just didn't work. 
Okay, guys, thank you. I see I've been losing people because people are like out of eat and, you know, coming home from work and all this. It's time for me to sit down and enjoy the day. So thank you so much for joining the broadcast. Remember, I'm writing the book. It's part of the reasons why I do these broadcasts, not only to teach you guys, but to remind you that I'm writing this damn book. Um, the, the intermittent fasting between men and women can be different. It depends on, women tend to have more metabolic damage. They tend to have estrogen dominant. They tend to have issues with their gallbladder. Women, all, t women also tend to have two days in one because we've got all of this oxytocin in us and men have vasopressin. They can focus on one thing and watch TV. We come home and we're doing 5,000 things at once. So that's why women tend to have um, adrenal issues when they fast. You can see thyroid issues. You can see, you know, adrenal insufficiencies and, and chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia more in women who fast. But I see it in women. Decaf is, is, they, they use really harsh chemicals like the benzoyl chloride to take out. No, decaf coffee is garbage. No coffee, people. Give up your addictions. Get out of the matrix. Don't let food rule you. You have control of your life. Don't let it control you. Learn how to clean things out and then add things back in. You have to be willing to cross that bridge and do whatever it takes. Ma matcha is not okay. Nope, it's actually blood sugar. Nope, 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 nope. Get rid of it. Organic coffee a day is going to frack you up. Get rid of it, even eight ounces. It overstimulates your adrenal glands to produce too much adrenaline, coupled by cortisol and all these other things that it down regulates. It's very acidic. It's a diuretic. It messes with your freaking pregnenolone on steel. Get rid of it. At the end of the day, it's overstimulating. you forcing your adrenal glands to do a, a job that it's not designed to do. Even though you people think it's like antioxidant benefits and it's got like, you know, it's a vasodilator and all this garbage. Get rid of it. Pickles and olives. Olives, yes, maybe. And be careful with the pickles because yeah, just be careful with the quality of it. Okay, guys, I'm out. Duck lard? Duck fat? I think lard is pork. Yeah, uh, Alan, go to, go to, um, go to fatworks.com for well-sourced fats that you can order online. Fatworks.com if you're looking for good quality animal fat. Duck butter is good, never had it. Uh, Grass-fed ground beef, you can have it whenever you want, as long as you don't have a histamine response and the bacteria doesn't affect you on the meat. I did a grass-fed beef for a year and a half because uh, I wanted to have my hemoglobin be stable and I wanted to have, um, uh, uh, I wanted to see what creatine would do and it blew me up. I gained 15 pounds on grass-fed beef in a year and a half on a small frame, I was huge. So yeah, you wanna do grass-fed beef? Go for it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm tough on the outside, soft on the inside. <laughs> no coffee at all, nope. I think PJ is actually st stating no coffee at all. Yes, uh, be careful with bone broth and collagen. Those things can spike your blood sugar. And that's a whole nother broadcast that I should talk about taking amino acids and branch chain amino acids and powdered protein and bone broth. What, what how will that affect your keto adaptation? Uh, I'm not going to go into your uh, triglycerides and because I'm not going to act as a doctor on this channel, but I do have an opinion on the inside. Keto for life. Whoop, whoop. I'm doing keto forever. You guys can go back to my videos. I look tired. I look haggard. I don't look well. And the older I get, the better I get. So I'm in it. I'm in it every second of every hour of every, every freaking day out of the year. I don't play. My food is fantastic. I know how to cook. I know how to make the food amazing, amazing. So there is no depravity in my life. None. Food is amazing. Energy is amazing. Sleep when I'm not working on this book is amazing. <laughs> Workouts are amazing. Health is amazing. Why would I go back to shit carbs? Why would I do that? I don't hit intermittent fast. Leaky gut's a whole nother story. Thank you, Steve. 200 grams of fat for beginners and everybody when you start keto. Um, 
and I don't care how tall you are. But that's a whole nother video. I'll do another video about how to eat your macros because I think that people are very interested, like how does that work? How do you split it up throughout the day? There's a lot of conflicting information that if you eat too much fat, you can't lose weight. Well, that's not keto. You need to eat the fat too because your body's converting dietary fat first before it will be willing to let go of the body fat. I actually don't know what size this board is. I don't know. But if I show you guys some images of me skateboarding, I'll off my tripod. My phone did not like me taking it off the tripod. This is, this is what it looks like, you guys. <laughs> it did not like me doing that. Uh, I'm going to show you this, guys, and then I'm going to go. So that's me skateboarding. And as you see up there, that's me skateboarding. So when I say I was a pro skater, you guys, I'm not lying. You know, people are like, oh, yeah, I did this too. No, no, Steph actually did it. You know, this is when I was very young. Uh, you know, look at that. I got the full section of the paper. Boom, 21 years old. And then up there is an interview in Swedish, so people who, because uh, I lived in Sweden, Sweden, that's why you see in some videos, jag pratar lite svenska, men jag glömmer att prata svenska nu, för att jag borde prata engelska och prata om uh, um, keto på engelska. Men nu jag försöker prata lite svenska för alla som kan förstå mig från Danmark, Norge och Sverige. Hejsan! Okay guys, so yeah, so I just wanted to be a little bit more personal, kind of show you a little bit of what bro your bits. Ah, finns en svenskar. Förlåt, min svenska är inte så bra för att jag har ingen att prata svenska med, men jag försöker i alla fall. Ooh, A1C, that's high, honey. Alan, you got a lot of work. It does not sound like French. French is like, boop, 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 and Swedish is like, like, who do they get? Who more do? That's, no. French is like, you know, bonjour, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, the next, tri I love Prague. I've been to Prague before. My next trip is probably, I want to go to Iceland, but I'm missing my window because I want to go now. But no, I'm stuck here. Having to write this damn book. I mean, this great, amazing book that you should only look at that one because the rest of them are... <clears throat> except for Nora Gagaudis and Jeff Fenny, Steve Bullock. Oh, and uh, David Perlmutter. Okay, guys, I'm hungry. I'm overtalked. It's time for me to go. Thank you for joining the broadcast. As you see, I'm doing this long arm style now. And I'm off the tripod. Oh, and Noakes. I love Tim Noakes. I've, I've visited him visited him twice. He's the sweetest man ever. He's a smart guy. I keep forgetting to mention Tim Noakes. He's one of my favorite. Yes, the book's going to be good. It's going to be good. Because it's going to be... It's said in a language where you guys understand. And I'm filling in the gaps where people are like, don't mention stuff in books or, or on all these videos. They don't really go into the crux of things. Yes, my Facebook is Stephanie the business. It's got quotations around the business person. And it, it meant the business. It didn't mean like business as in a business person. And so that's my Facebook. Uh, you don't, you have to, that's free content right there. Stephanie the business person. Or my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. You know, at first I hated Instagram. I was like, eh, eh. but it's grown on me even though I hate uh, social media. I did do handstands today. If I wasn't on my phone, I'd show you the video I made doing handstands today, but you'll have to catch me on Instagram for that. So thanks guys. And I'm a hundred, I'm a hundred. I'm, I'm an hour and 19 minutes. I told myself just an hour and I always over talk. The book, there's no release date yet. I'm still writing it. So thank you guys. Thank you for everything. You've been awesome. This has been a great broadcast. You know, I wasn't being all too mouthy and talking shit about other people. I just kept it on what's what most important. And I appreciate you guys a lot. And uh, being on the internet, it's not an easy play. It's got to watch my mouth half the time. 
All right, guys. Thank you, and I'm out. Peace. Thank you. You can watch the replay if anybody didn't get a chance, if who came in late. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And I'm out. Ooh. Can I get out? Can I get out? Yes, I want out.